everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. This week, you guys are gonna learn something incredible. It's the top five things contractors want to know about Aquascape Construction, the world's largest pond and waterfall construction company. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. And like promised, we're gonna keep things a little bit different, a little bit more detailed than normal. I'm gonna take you through the week by week life of what we do here at Aquascape Construction. And this week is no different than any other week. It is crazy. In fact, I don't even know why, especially if you live in the Midwest, the winter seems like it should be something that we get to take a big deep breath. But for us, it almost feels like winter every year for as long as I've been here. Hey, look at the sunrise, huh? Every, every year it's busier than it is in the summer. And I don't know how it's possible, but it is. And I think it's just because Aquascape is just such a machine. We have so much stuff going on. This week, we've got Academy. And Academy, for all you new guys, is a huge training event we do. There's some, I think there's 80 some contractors here this week. It's a two day event. We do a hands-on build and we do a classroom section. They're coming to learn. We're here to learn from them, but we're gonna share top tricks, top secrets, top things that we've learned over the years. What not to do, what to do, uh, how we run a maintenance division, how we run our construction side, how to build a pond, how to sell a pond, all those different types of things. So hopefully they learn a lot from us over the next couple days. Hey, Greg. First Academy, you ready? I'm brushing my teeth, I'm, <laughs> I, hope, I'm, I hope I'm ready. This guy lives in Utah now, and when he comes back here into Chicago, this is his home. Kind of an awesome home. The same time, we also have some major initiatives going on in our fish retailing area. I gotta show you that. We've got emails going out to all of our past customers. I wanna get in front of Haley and Danielle and Amanda, start talking about how many signups we have for our spring cleanups and our maintenance packages, which are kind of a combined thing, so we'll talk a little bit about how we're doing that. And then just trying to keep our heads above water the rest of the time. So a lot going on. Let's go check in on the retail store really quick. And then we'll shoot over and introduce you to some of the Academy members. All right, so I'm heading over back to the fish retailing area. JD is supposed to be working on a wall that kind of gives our filters and plumbing maybe a little privacy. They were supposed to show you how to do it, but it's already done. Look at this. How awesome is that? Kind of gave them carte blanche on what they wanted to do aesthetically. I said this could be reclaimed wood. It could be some of the colored pallet wood down in here. I didn't really care. I just wanted a wall to help hide all the filter media and stuff that's sitting back behind it. I love what they chose, the corrugated steel, because it really ties in with the corrugated steel over there. The only thing I wish they did, because I asked them to, I'll have to bring them back up here, is a wall that goes from there to there. I remember talking about it like a little L shape there and the reason I want that is because no longer does this snake enclosure push back as far as I would like it. So this stays up front but I want to put something here to help hide that. Those are the compressors for oxygen so when we're bagging these fish we can put them in oxygen rich bags and uh, keep them super healthy. So we'll bring them back up here. We'll see if we can't get <laughs> them filmed building this little section but these are little odds and ends we do all the time. The other thing that that happened. We still got all of our fish in these tubs. Now they're more than healthy in here. They all have tons of filtration. Everything's looking really, really good. Fish are doing just fine back in here. I would just like to give them their bigger home. But right now they've got enough space. There's like two to three fish per enclosure and they'll be fine. So this is one part of some of the stuff going on this week. I'm hoping to give you guys the top five things contractors need to know about running a business. So let's shoot back over and get things started. And and just like that, the 2023 Aquascape Academy began. This one was a bit more special than the rest because we planned to have two happen in the same week. What happened, we had such a big group of people and there's no way we wanted to put 80 contractors in a small sandbox. So at the very last minute, we split everybody up. Everyone came in Monday night, we had dinner, we shared some stories. I love seeing all the new faces. I love seeing some of the old faces. Lots of times it feels like a little bit of a reunion. Tuesday morning was when the fun began. Chris had the first group of contractors in the sandbox showing how to install a fountainscape on an aqua basin. Now we're using granite here. Well, that 
was going on, Greg was hosting his class on the top 10 do's and don'ts contractors should or should not make. So the first rule of business is... But before I have you see Greg take it away with one of his points, I wanna share with you a question I got before his class from a young contractor, Josh. Hey Josh, introduce yourself really quick. I'm Josh, I'm out from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia area, and I'm with Aqua Reality. When you're starting out like a new pond business, like, uh -huh. what's your like biggest tips? Oh my gosh, well Josh, you know that there's like a two day class about to start here, and yeah. we're gonna be going over all of that stuff. But if I were to give you maybe more of a condensed version rather than like how do you do the maintenance, how do you do the construction, how do you sell? I would say if I was just starting out, the very first thing I would focus on is building relationships. When I mean that, like it's relationships with other landscape nurseries, with other landscape designers, architects, different builders. Networking. Networking. Like yeah. start doing it. Take people out to lunch. Go knock on the doors, and and it's gonna be stressful at first, right? Like going to a garden center and say, hey, I'm Josh with Aqua Reality. Are you guys currently building or maintaining water features? I'm just looking to maintain, right? If, especially if they're already building. What I've noticed with a lot of builders out there, especially a lot of landscape designers and stuff, they'll build it, but there's no maintenance schedule set up for those guys. And you're just kind of looking to get like your foot in the door. Yeah. So start with that maintenance. You take care of those maintenance customers. The future of that project becomes yours. When I say the future of that project, it's how long is it going to take before that customer wants to upgrade? How long is it going to take before that customer wants to rip that out and do something bigger because customers are always making their projects bigger. How long is it going to take before that customer moves and wants a new project? And they no longer remember who built it, they remember you because you've maintained that relationship. Yeah, the connection. So make those connections with all those different people, get your foot in the door with just doing maintenance, yeah. and then watch that maintenance division grow and grow and grow and eventually turn into more of a construction site. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah, man, go get them. Okay, now that you heard that, we can cut to Greg. So the first rule in business is to live the aquascape lifestyle yourself. The next most important thing is don't give a customer what they ask for, give them what they want. And the reason that I say this, which is counterintuitive, you guys come to a seminar to learn how to design, sell, and build water features, and the presenter is telling you don't give a customer what they ask for. It's is that counterintuitive? When a customer is asking you for something, what are they really asking you for? Your expertise. How many ponds has your customer built? Okay. Probably none, or if they built one themselves, there's a reason you're out there to fix it up. If you're in this business long enough, customers will ask you to make water flow off the roof or water to flow upstream, okay? Most times what somebody says to us is, can you build a pond in the back corner of the property because it's always low and I get water, rainwater pooling there. Is that where you want to build a pond? Where there's a drainage problem? Where should the pond be? Even outdoor loving people spend most of their time indoors. So you wanna make sure that you put the water feature where you can enjoy it from inside the house next to the patio or you build them a hardscape patio to sit there. So when I say don't give a customer what they ask for is when a customer is asking you for something, what they're really asking for is your opinion. Well, ma'am, the reason that we don't build the pond in the lower portion of the property is that's gonna have groundwater impact, which is gonna cause hydrostatic pressure, nutrients to run in the water, you won't have good water quality. How about putting it right next to your patio where you can see it from your kitchen window? And what does a customer say when you actually say that to them? That makes sense. Oh, okay. I mean, and, and by the way, and if they didn't, and you built it in the back corner of the property, and, uh, and the hydrostatic pressure bubbles up the liner, and they lose their fish because the Kemlon guy came the next before, who's responsible for that? Because you gave the customer what they asked for versus what they want. Does this make sense? So the first principle in being successful as a water feature business installer is not to give the customer what they ask for, but give them what they want, which is a beautiful, low maintenance, natural water feature. Which, by the way, if they ask you, which is the number one thing, by the way, people ask, a five foot high waterfall, a five foot high waterfall in a flat back yard, does that look natural? So what we say is, well, do you want a volcano spewing lava or do you want a natural waterfalls, right? And what do they say? Well, oh, I want a natural, I want one like that. Oh, that one's 24 inches. Now we could build you a five foot high waterfall in this flat back yard, but we gotta bring in two semis of soil and you'll lose three fourths of your yard to do proper slope over angle. Is that what you want? No, I don't, I want one. And so then you show them pictures and ideas. If you try to build a five foot high waterfall in a flat back yard, it's gonna be out of scale. And does a five foot high waterfall leak a lot when, it, when it's windy? Okay, once again, then who's responsible? So don't give a customer what they ask for, give them what they want. Good. <laughs> Woo -hoo, so fun. That was awesome, awesome group. We're taking a break, we're taking about a 30 minute break. While on break, I got to answer another question. Hey Patty, this is kind of cool. We're actually sitting in Greg's office, I which know. I do actually on a regular basis when he's not in town. Don't tell him I'm not an Ohio State fan. <laughs> Most people aren't. <laughs> Patty, introduce yourself really quick. I understand you've got an important question. Yeah, my name is Patty Sanders. I work for Earthworks. We're out of Jacksonville, Florida. You 
start the consultation with somebody, like what kind of things do you start? What are you asking them or how do you make that transition to talking about your product? That's a great question. There's there's so much stuff. In fact, even last night, I started actually changing the way I wanted to do some of that stuff. One of the things I wanted to really create was a questionnaire for our customers. And the questionnaire can be all kinds of things like how long have you lived in the home? Are you married? Do you have children? Do you have grandchildren? Um, how long have you heard about our company? Have you been to any of our social media? Team Aquascapes, Greg the Pond Guy, Ed the Pond Professor. Have you ever been to a retail store? These are all like such useful things for us. The other thing that I think is the most important before going out on any consultation is really establishing some type of budget, right? If you've got a budget in mind, at the very least, you're not over designing a project yep. for them because too many times in the past, I've actually over designed a project. And when you, if they've got a budget of twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 in their mind, but you got them excited about an eighty hundred thousand dollar project. Yeah. What do they want at the end of that? Right. They right. want the eighty hundred, but they're too embarrassed to tell you they've only got twenty thirty. Right. So more often than not, they'll say, uh, "Let us think about it," and they'll say, "This guy, me, you know, wanted eighty hundred. Right. We got it for twenty thirty. Were we comparing apples to apples? Yeah. Probably not. So if I know their budget, I can get them really excited about a twenty or thirty thousand dollar project, sure. or a five to ten thousand dollar project. But I have to know that budget. Yep, I understand. Yeah. yeah, it works for me too. Same. That's similar with me a lot of times too. So the academy is going so well. I love the energy of the group. Well, I think my favorite part about the academy is these new guys and these light bulbs that you see popping off in their heads and you can just tell they're getting super, super inspired by the things Greg's teaching them. We're gonna take a 12 o'clock lunch. We get a one hour break. I go on next, I do my sales stuff, but I really wanted to come back and see how the wall's coming because like I said before, so many times there's so many moving parts. And I'm looking at it now and it's exactly what I'm looking for. So they've got this wall up, which ultimately hides what was behind it because you can't see me anymore. Right? So we had all of those compressors and stuff that you can see back in through here. This corrugated steel is going to come back in through here. I'm going to have them trim it out the same way they trimmed out the rest. And then ultimately, I can come in here and over the top of this tin, throw all kinds of pictures of beautiful koi and way more educational type stuff. Like I want people to know why it's called the Kohaku, why it's called the Showa, why it's Jinrin, why it's Doitsu, all of those different things, which we'll share with you very soon. All right, let's go grab some lunch and get motivated for my big presentation at one. Usually about a block to two blocks before we get there, we all do this. We look in the rear view mirror. And why do we look in the rear view mirror? There's not schmutz on my face from the day or whatever. I don't have mud up in here. My hands are dirty. I'm wiping mud on my forehead. We all look in the rear view mirror and make sure that uh, we look acceptable. So I want you guys to do this. Stand up. Uh, oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, crank kick. No. <laughs> Next time, you guys look in the rear view mirror, do this. You say, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. So a little bit more like, I'm great. I'm, I'm great. great. Now make it like so everybody in this entire building can hear it. I'm great! I'm, I'm great! Now stare at each other. You see that goofy ass smile you all have on your face? You guys feel the difference in the energy in the room right now. Right? Screaming, I'm great. And look at you're all still smiling. You got it all? Look at them all smiling. <laughs> this is the energy you have to have when going on a design consultation. If you don't have this energy, the customers are gonna pick up on it. If you're feeling under the weather, if you're exhausted, do you still do the consultation? Rebook it. Freddie, it's so awesome you're here. I heard you have an awesome question, but before your question, introduce yourself really quick to everybody. Hi, uh, I'm Freddie from Escape World Gardens from the UK, so it's uh, great to be here, really. It's been a long day, really, flights and everything, so. <laughs> you know what, but you're much. hanging in there, yeah. right? You've got a question about maintenance. What's the best way of getting maintenance package? Oh my gosh, so we've been doing maintenance packages for years, and the one thing I realized years and years ago is that flyers just don't work. So yeah. we put together the most beautiful brochures we've ever had that explained our diamond package, our platinum package, the gold, the silver, but without actually physically calling the customer, you weren't gonna get anybody to actually understand it. They were just more like, this is pretty, don't think I need this. So you have to physically take the time to call each individual customer and then sell it to them. Why it's important for them, like a, a diamond package I might sell as, your pond is gonna be party ready. We know more about your pond than you would ever, ever know. We're gonna come out there, we're gonna make sure there's never exposed rubber, we're gonna fertilize your lilies, we're gonna cut back, 
clearly is, who wants us to feed your fish, we'll feed your fish, right? So you gotta sell it. You can't use a brochure, you can't do a mailing, you can't do an email, you gotta call the person. Does that help? Yeah, perfect. All right, man. Cheers, everyone. All right, it's Thursday. The Academy just wrapped up. So much fun. I've got about an hour to kill. So I thought it'd be a perfect time to come over, check out our maintenance coordinator over here. We sent out an email blast to all of our past customers. It's not just our past customers. It's anybody that we built a pond for last year or in the last five years. Our maintenance program consists of five different things. We have a diamond, we have a platinum, we have a gold, we have a silver, we even have a bronze. Let's go check in with Haley and see how we're doing. Hey Haley, I hate to interrupt. I know you guys are busy, especially when two screens are lit up over there <laughs> and you've got three. Hey, how are we doing on maintenance packages right now? We have 78 maintenance packages already signed up. Oh my gosh, so is, what, is that in the last two days? Yes. I checked in with you a few days ago and you had like six. Yep, they're Seven. coming in quick. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Well, that's exciting. 78 maintenance packages already signed up. I can't wait to show you next week the progress of those maintenance packages because usually we get to about 350 pretty fast, sometimes even up to 400, but we got to cut it off at a certain point. All right, guys, stay tuned. My name is Jeremy. I'm from New York, a small escaping company. And that's awesome. Thanks so much for coming. Are you enjoying it so far? It was amazing. It was a great experience. We learned so much. I can't wait to put it into work in my business. So we're about to jump into a maintenance section, but I heard you have a question about maintenance. What's going on? Yeah, it was, uh, my main question was how you generate leads. How do we generate maintenance leads? A couple ways to do that. I talked earlier about like trying to build relationships with other landscapers. What I found is there's a lot of contractors out there that don't even offer a maintenance business. So the typical contractor, when I think a landscape designer, landscape firm, they might only put in two or three ponds a year, but they don't have a service plan after that. So I'd start calling local landscapers in the area that have built ponds, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm not looking to actually do any pond installs right now. I just want to know if you have a service plan and if I can be that service guy for you. Another way is kind of a trick. You can actually go on Zillow. Are you familiar with Zillow? Yeah, definitely. Zillow is that real estate app. Mm -hmm. You can go on there and if you actually type in, type in water features, ponds, streams, fountains, wow. and it'll give you a list of all the different houses in the area that have those things. And then of course do a mailing to those people. Yeah, it will be an amazing way to find them, an easy way, because you can go on Zillow anytime. And you have to keep in touch with me because I want to know how it works. Definitely. Give me a call back. I'll give you my cell phone number. I will. Thank yeah. you for so everything. So much for coming, bud. All right. Take care. Thanks so much for coming, man. Yep. It was awesome pleasure. having you. The end of the two days. Hey, before I get any further, introduce yourself really quick to the camera. Let them know who you are and where you're from. Nick with NC Outdoors. I'm from Northern California. I understand you have one more question, something we didn't cover that's specific to your business. Yeah, so as a hardscaper, we do design build. Uh -huh. What is the best way for us to get into doing, to offering ponds? So you currently already do a lot of hardscape, a lot of patios, walls, and everything else. Yeah. I guess the very first thing I would do is tap into those past customers. Like, What's that list look like? Do you have 100, do you have 50, do you have 200? If it's 100, if it's 50, if it's five, it doesn't matter, but I would tap into those past customers, let them know you just went through a two day training. I could totally visualize, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, a water feature in your backyard. Right. You've already got a relationship with this past customer, let them know what you do. I'd send them that book that Greg talked about, you know, our yeah. big coffee table book. Yeah. Send them that book. These are not tire kickers. These are customers that have already invested a lot of money with you. Let them know I've got an idea. I would love to come out for a free design consultation. The reason you're going free is because it's already a past customer. I can totally picture this water feature in your backyard. I'd love to show you, but get excited about it. Right, right. I think also because you guys are a, um, a design firm, just start designing in more water features. You know, like behind us over here is a medium stack slate urn. It's a huge addition to any outdoor living space. And what you'll find too is that as you put in more of these water features, it takes your patio from just being a patio to bringing it to life. Having that moving water and everything else and the way the underwater lights come up on that on that urn You got to get footage of that and show them the difference between the daytime urn and the nighttime urn yeah. and really sell them the lifestyle Great. All right, man. Yeah, thank cool. you very much. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Awesome. What a crazy week. Oh my gosh Monday seems like a month ago. Let's recap really quick. We had two ponds built We had 80 plus contractors in here. Greg and I did two different presentations The maintenance team is back there still doing emails and collecting 
filling in all of those different clean outs and answering tons and tons of questions. And I've ended up here in the fish room and oh yeah, we're still working on fish stuff back in here. So let's check in with JD, Levi, Juan and how much progress they've been making back here. You remember not too long ago, this wall wasn't here. Aesthetically, this still looks incredible. I can't wait to get all my signage in here. JD's been working back here the last couple days and come up with a pretty awesome solution. So if you can remember in the past, we had these big dividers in here and they were big unilock block in here, but they were spun this way. Each one of those took about 12 inches. And so we said, if we could take these things, get rid of the unilock separators in here and come up with a different solution by putting plexiglass in here, we'll free up a foot for every single one of these things. Oh, perfect timing, JD. Look at that, just slides right in. Instantly, we have an area where we can keep some larger fish separated from maybe some smaller fish. So if we free up all this space, we would get one more bin. So we got a foot here, a foot here, a foot here. We put plexiglass in, we're gonna free up five feet. He actually even moved them in six inches, which then gave us a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different areas to stage vision. I just love it. The other thing I really love, I love that the plexiglass can come in and out. Instantly, if I wanna create a larger space, we can pull out a separator right here and have one big area for fish to go. The other thing he's gonna be working on the next week is a new netting system that sits in here to keep the fish from jumping out. We still have to do some stuff back over in there. We still have to do some stuff in our wetland. We have some plumbing things. So hopefully next week, we've got all the fish that have been living over here temporarily back in their home over there. You guys can watch us get those guys back in there, introduce them to their new home, and more importantly, we can start working on this big monster of a fish tank. And all of this is happening while Chris is about to get on a plane and go back to Spain. Yes, we didn't finish that project in Spain. Chris is getting back on a plane, go out to Spain, get that thing finished up with Jack Harju from Atlantis Water Gardens, Alan Decker from Decker's Pondscapes. Hopefully we get that thing running we wish Chris a safe trip and then you guys know what to do like comment subscribe Tell me how you like the new format how much you're looking forward to seeing that new fish enclosure done and we'll show you next week. Bye